This is the Acer Predator G3 gaming desktop. Aimed at budding PC gamers, this desktop PC is targeted at first time buyers and novices alike. But is it actually any good and will it run the latest games? Well, over the last two weeks, I found out. So then, the G3. This gaming desktop is a very, very well-styled machine. Not everyone's going to like it, but if you are someone that likes something that is a bit edgy, I think it's going to appeal. And this is a gaming desktop that's more at the budget sort of end, coming in at around about £600, and is designed for people that don't want to go and build their own PCs. And I think that on the whole, for that target audience, this thing probably will appeal. So the question is, should you be attracted to this? Should you go out and buy it? Does it represent good value for money? But ultimately, can it actually play the latest titles? Well, before we get into that, we'll talk about the overall design and the build quality, both of which are actually very good. The overall design, yes, it's very striking and a lot of people won't like it, but personally, I think it does sit quite nicely on my desk. It's a mid-tower, so it's not really that big, and it's not really the lightest thing in the world, but it's certainly not the heaviest, and most will get along with it nicely. Looking at the front of the computer, it's clearly the front that's been the most heavily styled, with that Predator logo and armor plating, and this is where you'll find the power button, you'll find a pair of USB 2.0 ports, a headphone jack, microphone, SD, and then you also get this quite cool headphone holder, which, yes, it's probably not gonna be that useful for a lot of people, but if you are someone that has it on your desk, it definitely could prove to be a useful feature nonetheless. Moving up the G3, you will find a hot swappable 3.5 inch drive bay for inserting an additional hard drive in. Note that I couldn't actually find a way to do this with a 2.5 inch drive, so if you carry an SSD around with you, it's not going to be any good. But the benefit here is that it's quick and easy, and it won't void your warranty by removing that warranty sticker when you open up the case. The final thing to find on the front of the G3 is an old school, old fashioned DVD rewriter and burner, which a lot of people still find useful. But then on the top of the Predator, it has a carrying handle, and this does make it a bit easier to pick it up. Moving to the back side of the computer, you've pretty much got all the ports here you need. The power supply is located at the top of the case. Then you've got an HDMI display port that you will not want to use, of course, because you want to use the graphics card. Then you've got four USB 3.0, two USB 2.0, Ethernet, microphone, headphone, line out, and then DVI, HDMI 1.4, and your display port. Now, while removing the side panels is very easy, do note that this will probably void your warranty as you have to rip through a warranty sticker to do this and this is probably the biggest disadvantage with going with a computer like the G3. But once you have done that, everything it's not really what you'd call well cable managed but for what it is it's absolutely fine and reveals a very basic looking interior that certainly isn't going to impress anyone and is probably the reason why they didn't include a window other than just cost factors. It's by no means bad. The real thing here is that it's going to be all about expandability and how easy it is to do so. And the fact that you've got to rip through a warranty sticker already makes this a big no-no for a lot of people. But regardless, you have an extra drive bay, of course you have the one on the front as well, and then you've got one spare SATA port to do with whatever you want, but that probably is going to be used for a hard drive. But I think that for most people, the ability to add up to two new hard drives will probably be more than enough but please note it's actually very difficult to remove the one that's pre-installed. Now graphics card, this is a R9 360, so it's not the most powerful thing, but should get the job done in a lot of games. And then we have an i5 6400 processor and 12 gigabytes of RAM. Now I must stress that these are just the parts in this SKU, so yours may vary, but please note in this case there is no case fans at all. This simply relies on the one on the power supply, the CPU and the GPU to do its job, which will mean that if you want to put a more expensive graphics card in here, you might struggle. And so with that, it's time to talk gaming performance. What is this thing like? Well, I played an array of games and we'll start with Hitman. Running DX12 with FXAA and the highest maximum settings that the safeguards would allow, we got 30 frames a second at 1080p average, which is very playable, but ideally you'd want slightly more. So when you lower them to more realistic settings, so low textures and then the medium preset, we got an average of 41, which is very, very playable. Moving very swiftly on and diving towards our next benchmark, see what I've done there, we have Rise of the Tomb Raider. 
and this running at the highest settings I could enable with none of that fancy hair and just FXAA, again at DirectX 12, we got an average of 20 frames a second at 1080p, and then more realistic settings, so the medium preset, we got 31 frames a second, again with FXAA. Moving on to our final game in the suite, and the final benchmark, and it should be noted that all of these figures were taken with the in-game benchmarks that these games included, was Dirt Rally, and this got 36 frames a second running at Ultra, 1080p, CMAA, with none of that advanced blending enabled. Then if you wanted a more realistic and high performing figure, we got 57 frames a second at the high preset. So this is very, very playable, and this is definitely the sort of figures we want when we're playing PC games. And so then, those results clearly show us that the R9 360 is a capable card and can perform well in some of the latest titles. And this is probably more the sort of PC that people playing more casual games are going to want to look at, because it runs games like Dota and Rocket League without any issues whatsoever. Those that want to play the most demanding titles, especially if you want to play at 1440p or higher, are better off looking at something else. But this is the G3. Its target audience would be happy with this machine. But while this thing does offer good value for money at its current price point, and I think it does look very nice, as soon as you take that warranty sticker off, you have probably voided that warranty, and thus it will at the very least put you off upgrading this thing. Whereas if you go from somewhere like Overclockers UK and you get a pre-built system, you have more customizability options and you don't have to worry about voiding that warranty as soon as you open it up. But that is a decision you're going to have to make for yourself, but overall as an off-the-shelf solution, this thing wins the good option award. Because it's just that, it's a good option, it's not the most well-performing thing out there, but it offers fairly decent value for money compared to some of its competition at its reduced current price point. So thank you so much for checking out this video, as always I really appreciate your time. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this, loads of them coming, this is Go Big Week, so we've got 8 videos in 8 days, very exciting. Give this video a like if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next video.